So look, um, just to just say, del delighted to be here this afternoon. Um, my name is Sean Moynihan, I'm a CEO of Valone, and our, what we do is we enable and empower older people to age at home. Um, really grateful to Martin and his team for the opportunity to speak, speak today among such uh, illustrious other uh, pioneers and innovators in, in the area. You know, uh, for us in alone, we're a service organisation that really has had a 10 year vision around the rollout of our community hub model of staff and up to long term 9000 volunteers working with multiple partners in statutories and in the NGO and private sector, really to try and bring uh, multiple strategies through the front door of all, all older people across the country in creating uh, this network of, of staff, we're really creating a pipeline that we can deliver our services, other people's services, and also technology and the ability to respond to technology in, in, a, in a way that we hope will integrate, will integrate, will, will integrate uh, with everybody and produce proven proven impacts. You know, we we as a service organisation, as such, uh, as we set off with what we were trying to do, we're always looking for technology to enable our vision and to make it possible. I know others have been technology organisations that we're now working with who need also the human integration and the human relationships to, to do that. And um, so that's what we've been trying to do. So. I'm not sure. Bear with me one second. Sean, would you prefer for me to drive? And no, I am. I've got it now. Sorry, apologies. Excellent. I think I was showing you two, two, two things by accident. Apologies. We can see that. Uh, I think the first thing to do is say, look, this has been a year like no other. And, you know, a very traumatic year, very stressful for an awful lot of people, young and old, a lot of anxiety and a lot of support needed for people in the community, especially all older people. But ironically, as uh, as, as as Paul Reid uh, has just expressed, you know, a lot of our missions around this may have also taken step forward. Our mission is to revolutionise how we are offering innovative and supportive services to older people to age in our community. And that has actually taken a step forward this year among all of that. Don there in the picture has also taken a huge step forward at the, at the age of 84, he passed his driving test this year. So, you know, um, um, at the very start. But look, so what I'd say to you is, is for us, as I said, it's a 10 year of exploring the area of coordinating services, working with multi multiple disciplinaries in government departments with older people at the centre. We feel that ageing is a bit like global warming. Older people, we have an ageing population, which is great news. You know, it's the positive, it's our friends, our relatives, and our friends, the people we love that are ageing long, lo, lo, are living longer. But like global warming, every government department, not just health and HSE, need to be looking at their policies and strategies around ageing. And using the principles that universal design, not only in technology, but also in services, so that it, it's, that everything is accessible for, 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 for all older people. As an NGO, innovation really is central to what we do, filling the gap between the needs of the people and where statutory bodies tend to be at. And so for us, technology was always a, a, something that we were going to innovate on, go in and work on. And really that is also about risk management and really then, as I put up on the slide there, that is a journey of language, a journey of trust, a journey of relationships as we apply techno te technology and move forward together. And alone, we're well advanced in sort of technology application and on that road. And we're really, you know, but digital transformation will probably come further we, we, in the coming years with the use of AI and we're started along that road uh, at the moment. And by the time we get to that stage, we're hoping our infrastructure of staff across the country, volunteers and relationships will be in place so that we can get the full capacity out of technology. So just to give you a quick sense of what we do, um, and the services we provide. So we provide integrated support uh, to older people to age at home. And ultimately this year we did 300% three, increase in the demand for our services during COVID. So in a typical, typical case, what you have is a situation, somebody either referred from primary health care or acute care, maybe trying to come home 
we mirror around the A&Es and work on the A&Es and the IGPOPs, and ultimately is as we do assessments of older people and support plans. While we're doing the assessments and maybe working on health, finance and transport issues and housing issues to get somebody home, we also have support and befriending phone services can check in daily, reassure, provide health and wellbeing, medication prompts, information. And then at the same time, as uh, we also have, um, we also, um, we, as part of that assessment process, we're also looking at technology prescription and we've tech engagement officers that will work with our support coordinator staff to install, install, monitor and train the older people in the use of technology devices, which I'll cover later. And then as we close out the support plan and we integrate all everybody together, our staff may move on, but we've left behind both the technology and also we sometimes introduce visiting volunteers who visit combating isolation and loneliness, providing tech, um, practical support, but also providing links into the community and also an early warning system if we need to return or we need to do more work more work to integrate things. During COVID, in some ways, we reversed the process and what happened was most of the referrals from primary healthcare and older people came through the phone line first and then we provided all the services that I've just 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 described, described there, working across three government departments. And people have mentioned it earlier. It's been a great step forward for civil society working together for older people in the community, guards on post, the GAA, and all the local local authorities. And we're working with over 150 partner organisations. So, in that respect. Together, we should hopefully make the impacts that we have down on the left hand side of that screen around independence, quality of life and well-being. We are also an approved housing body and we're building housing with on-site support in, in the in the gap between living at home and going into a nursing home. And we're doing that with the HSC and the Department of Ireland. But that's probably a whole a whole presentation a whole presentation in itself. I suppose as we as we offer offer our own services, we then operate a community hub model. And what that is, is within each CHO, we have those mobile support coordinators working with primary and acute care. We have the volunteer support officers, the tech engagement officers, the phone services. But then what we do is, is we start mapping the demographics. We map where all the services are in the local local community, and we try and align and maximise the impact of those services to where the old, older people are, identifying the needs, identifying gaps and blocks, and really work on huge partner, partnership arrangements of individuals. So we're not duplicating, but more maximizing everybody's resources. And so that if we go through the front door, we're bringing a lot of other people's services and relationships with us. And if somebody else goes through the front door, they're bringing uh, a lot out of our services. And in that way, we're weaving the world's world of health, housing and social care and community together. And as I said, we have a program then around training, technology sharing and resource training with other with, with other organizations. At the moment, we've around 100, 100 partners in this, in this community hub development mo model. And we've also uh, computerized around 18 or 18 other organizations. So we get common practice and goals in those in those areas. So um, just to put up a model slide of, I suppose, where we see and what we're trying to do by the application of, of, of technology. And what you, what, what you see, see there is, is what we're trying to do is to support older people to better manage their health, health care and remain at home, home, home for long, longer. The model shows where we see that fit. And what we're trying to do is, right, is depending on the challenge a person is facing at the time is is that the right person gets the right information to respond and support the older person and the older person remains in powers. In this diagram what you can see is is for the older person and their family, they're better access to information their healthcare needs, families are better equipped to support their relatives, older older people are better supported to live independently through self management. Local authorities in this situation, better insights in property management and maintenance and alerts and tenants better support and reducing risks. And for us in the community organisations, really it's providing consistency and quality of services and computerisation. And finally, for HSE, hospitals and primary, primary care, 
really it's about supporting timely discharge from our hospital, preventing readmission and better information sharing between the health and the community sector. Huge step forward over the last year has been the joint policy between housing and health and the implementation groups that are sitting on that at the moment. And the fact that that policy exists is the first journey around the road between breaking down the silos that can sometimes uh, exist between government government departments because they have that naturally exist really because they have uh, different statutory responsibilities and NGOs always operate between in those cracks between between that and we enable those things to work so as we move on in I suppose the application of technology the first thing I'd say to you is is you know we 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 approach digital solutions I suppose from is right trying to enhance functionality of older people their capacities and their participation we understand that you know we don't want to work necessarily from disease and deficit ma management orientation you know we want to actually build a capacity so really this is as well uh, as about health and welfare is about digital inclusion digital citizenship and really working uh, you know with social just justice ideals and really cross departmental collaboration at national, local and regional levels. And, and I think that is critical and that's where digital transformation come in. You know, we can break down the silos, we can break down the barriers of communication and give the right information to people. It's not, you know, for us, the journey around the use of technology uh, started seven or eight years ago where we developed our own management information systems. And then with all our partners, we saw a deficit in that. and. We've, as I said, we've around 18 organizations now using our management information systems with three quality standards. And now we've got people correcting the same data, operating to the same mo mo models. Then we worked on a situation where we worked with Netwell Casala for several years and we took the great work that they'd done under Rod Bond and we took that into the community and started using se sensors and tablets where people were self monitoring across. Um, uh, several hundred houses. We made sure to do it in areas with poor broadband first to prove that we could make these things happen. Where the value proposition in that was really strong and the benefit to people there, we probably found there was no customer. Nobody really wanted to pay for some of these things. And I'm sure other people have felt that pain too. Um, but ultimately is what's invaluable in these journeys is the learning. The knowledge you learn from introducing technology to so many older people coming out of hospital, older people with frailty issues, dementia issues, and that allows us to pre progress there. I think the engagement from older people is amazing and they really want to engage there. And some of maybe our perceptions around older people in this area may be slightly ageist if we're concerned that older people won't, won't, won't engage. A case study of the type of work we're doing at, at the moment would be really where an older man coming out of Bowman Hospital, 89 year old, 89 year old old man with, with dementia, quite confused, ultimately a situation where he has there at the moment the pebble where he's geo mapping around, around that with his permission that if he goes beyond a certain area or gets confused, ultimately alarms and alerts go on. Same man, very simple situation where where because of confusion couldn't switch on his telly. And ultimately is, is we have an Alexa work in his telly. He's using an iPad to connect with family, friends, and and actually in a choir that he was connected to that he had to drop out of, of several years ago and some medical devices on health. And ultimately is, is that's all of this is built in with, 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 shall we say, parameters and also sending the right information back and integrated with his home care and with our support coordinators and, 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 and with, um, and, and with, with his medic, me, medical staff. So that's where we are. And what we're now doing with that is, is we now have inventory of, of, of the types of technology we're using and we're training our support coordinators across the country that are working both in acute and in primary care, how to install and how to do that by having tech engagement officers. And then that training will ultimately pass on also to, to some of our, our volunteers. So ultimately is, is we can multiply again, producing a pipeline that we can bring our technology, other people's technology uh, and that down to all, all older people and produce that coordination. For us then, the, the, the future, I suppose we're currently working on four, four project projects, which is 
uh, sort of further into that transformation and into that disruption that only technology can bring. And what we 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 we're there is is from left to right, we're working on a shared services model of support with local authorities with approved housing bodies, because again, if we have the support services for them, we can accelerate the growth of housing for older people, especially specialist type of housing, without having to work worry for individual individual uh, financing for support staff for each housing. And th this type of what we're working on there is probably using narrowband where we produce data that will be able to monitor some health issues and environmental issues, but will then be backed up by, by, by health care systems. But again, will be very appropriate to what local authorities responsibilities, but also then with that we can cross over the links to health. The second, I suppose, is continuing our work with the MIS systems and ultimately is moving that forward where data can come back in and be processed by the MIS um, systems and that and growing the number of uh, other agencies that we're on. The third uh, system there as you as you come across uh, there is really where where we've been working with, with Octagon for the last two, 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 two years really to move to a situation where for people who may have chronic conditions, spares, trauma, frailty and other health and social care areas that really that we can keep sufficient contact with them and produce systems that have the ability to learn. So, so what I'd say to you there is, is, you know, human services, we can't respond or monitor to the level that that would be needed that we can get into preventative. But ultimately what we can do in this scenario scenario is, is we will be able to, to do that and move to a system that, you know, will keep contact with friends and families, share information with key stakeholders, reach out for support on demand, and really start exploiting automated supports and accesses to, uh, to connectivity. Um, I think the example of, of, of things like this is, will not come in day one, but probably in day 30, day 90, as the AI systems learns people's patterns, learns what's going on, and ultimately learns to respond automatically first and then how to escalate. And that's the, that's, that's the pattern of what we're working on. Fourth there on the right-hand side really is a range of, of, of of apps we're working for our own staff really and for other partner organizations that will link in to the MI in, in, into the MIS. So ultimately is, is again to create transferable, scalable models to consolidate our sector, you know, in the social care sector. So we're all operating sim similar models of operations and that we can keep working with local groups, with local staff, with local volunteers and engaging other partnership organ organizations. So that's a quick journey around our world at the moment. I think what I'd say say to underline all, all the things that we all probably are trying to think is, um, and for older people aging at home and the, the healthcare and the use of technology is, the, under Solange Care, we have the universal access to home, to home, uh, home care and home support. And really that will need to be rocked rolled out as the anchor for aging at home and the integration of, 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 of approach. You know, uh, we, we think we need to include digital solutions and coordinated solutions like we have as an, as an essential part of that uh, funding of ho home care so that basically we can create uh, better, better better connections and assist people living longer and aging in place. I think the reality is an awful lot of older people get an awful lot of good services from the acute and primary healthcare systems, but on you know, and they but the days and the weeks are long and ultimately is we need to bring in both the social, the family and the informal supports as well to make sure that the quality of life is such that they can maintain their own health and well-being and so reduce and shed, spread, spread the pressure away from the acute and the health system. Um, and third thing I think we need to underpin all this thing is universal design systems for tech and service solutions. So that ultimately is, is but all our buildings and our housing and, and that we built is very accessible to older people, but also that our service solutions are, are you know, work for people, whether they have frailty, disability, memory loss, whether they, they're hard of hearing, what, whatever it happens to be, we need universal design principles in all, all our services and digital standards uh, and, uh, and our buildings. 
I, I think this year, and to underline something somebody said er, earlier is, we have, I think, seen the beginning of a huge mindset of acceptance that what technology can do. I think people always talk of the digital divide, especially around older people get me jumping the digital divide. I think some of the digital divide has been within our own systems, our own structures, and within organizations, and the willingness to take some of the risks that are needed, or some of the testing and investments that's needed to make this, the, 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 this uh, everything that's possible. I think to conclude, I think, you know, we can create a very positive future from what has been a traumatic event. And I hope that this has been a cat catalyst. I think up and down the country, we've seen so much innovation in the implementation of strategy and in the rollout of technology. We've seen five years work in one year. And I think, um, you know, to use a well-worn phrase, the genie is might be is out of the bottle. And I think other pe people have seen what they think what is possible. I think as a country, we've grown in our belief and confidence that we can integrate systems, that we can talk across government departments, you know, private sector, NGOs, uh, 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 and across government departments and integrate services. And I think older people and an aging population can be the big, can be first in line, first in queue to actually benefit fr from that. Thank you. Thanks very much, John, for a uh, you know very inspiring t uh, talk. And on behalf of the you know the community that's associated with the Digital Academy Forum, just like to thank you for the brilliant work that you and your organisation do. It's it's really tremendous. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity today. And we we'll really look forward to partnering on the Living Lab. Before we need or move to our next speaker, I just wanted to give a shout out to one of the DAFCO founders, Lorraine Smith, who has you know been. Uh, you know, driving this from the start and really work to, to build the audience and build the community. And Lorraine, in this case, for the Q4 DAF has really gone the beyond the extra mile, beyond the extra 100 miles in terms of managing the social media, the comms, and helping with program development. So thanks very much, Lorraine, for that. It's much appreciated.